knowledge of nature through yoga is far deeper than what modern science has achieved. The scene we are observing through our senses is not nature by itself. The senses themselves are an inherent part of nature. But equally, the wandering mind, which is beyond the senses, is also nature. The intellect, which is beyond the wandering mind, is also nature. And beyond the intellect, there is Ankar, an entity that is self-conscious. That too is nature. And prime nature and consciousness or Purusha are far beyond all of this. The knowledge of consciousness can be realized through the knowledge of nature. Nature is the inspiration for the arts and aesthetics. Nature, knowledge and the arts together brought a qualitative transformation in the life experiences of Indians. They have been the force behind Indian culture. Indian culture can be understood within this triangle. The highest point of life is nature. Nature has been the guru of all the arts and knowledge. When the Supreme Consciousness descended into the natural body, people saw him. Sri Krishna said, See me in the divine glories of nature. Dekhori Sakhi, Neel Kamal Dal Sham. Dear friend, see Krishna among the blue lotuses. This is not a poetic metaphor. It is an expression of the realization of Krishna consciousness in nature. Indian art embraces knowledge and knowledge finds its expression in the arts. According to yoga, the fundamental purpose of nature is to exhibit itself. For exhibition, Nature takes beautiful forms. Is there a formula or calculation behind its beauty? These are the numbers of the Fibonacci series. But before Fibonacci, Jain Acharya Hemachandra had formulated them. Before him, it was Gopal. And even before him, Nirahank. And long before them, the sage Pingal chronicled this rhythmic pattern in his collection of the ancient Chandashastra a treatise on poetic meters. The interesting thing about these serial numbers is that when two consecutive numbers are added, the next number is obtained. Another characteristic is that when you divide a line in such a way, whether the total length is divided by the longer segment or the longer segment by the shorter one, the same value is achieved. This value is known as the golden ratio. The ratio of numbers in this series is very close to the golden ratio. Amazingly, this series and this ratio are seen in most of the beautiful creations of nature. The number of petals in a flower or the number of circles in a sunflower, all beautiful creations show this pattern. We do not know whether the artists knew this, but in the most beautiful man-made creations, this ratio is seen. Therefore, it is called the golden ratio of beauty. The same ratio is seen in the long and short beats of music, which makes it melodious. The rhythmic cycle of musical beats, known as Tal, follow this number series. When the voice or mantra is contained in a meter that combines the lagu and guru syllables and matras, it is called chanda or poetic classification. Chandas are the definite number of cycles of long and short meters. But the word meter is only a limited meaning of chanda. Through their yogic power, the ancient rishis saw the universe as rhythmic motion and pulsation they realized that the material universe is pulsating rhythmically as in a chanda. 
They called both the matter and the voice, Vak. The universe is bound by Chanda. Therefore, knowledge of the universe, the Vedas, are also bound by Chanda. One of the meanings of Chanda is protective shield. The Chandas have protectively shielded Vedic knowledge from time immemorial. It is the protection by Chanda and the metered recitation of the vast Vedic literature that has ensured its purity and continuity till today. In this way, the arts, music and poetry ensured the continuity of Indian knowledge. Mm -hmm.